All right, we're live. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the Journey Within. This is a journey of deconstruction and reconstruction of a death and rebirth. And today I am very excited and honored to be uh, talking with and interviewing Daniel Lovett, who is with who is a Christian mystic and has a YouTube channel, which is just amazing, Awakening with Daniel. So, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even as you said that about the deconstruction and reconstruction, it's it's just all oh, two things just flashed in my mind immediately. It was Jeremiah chapter one, where he taught, he laid out like his mission, his, his MO, you know, like, this is what you're going to be doing. It's going to be tearing down, uprooting, you know, and there's like four right. of these these things and then rebuilding and planting. And so it's like, even in this day of day and age, I mean, like I, I've been having the scripture go through my mind. It's, it, it can be frightening just to think about this, that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And that, that our trust is in, in a God who raises the dead, you know, and, and even thinking the other thing that flashed in my mind immediately when you said that deconstruction, reconstruction, the death and the life is Romans chapter six, you know, that we're, mm, we're yep. bonded with Christ, that he took us all. He took all creation through that process with him as the, the head of all humanity. But I, I, I see it's way bigger than that. It's, it's all creation, you know, cause mm. yeah, um, all creation participating in, in the death and resurrection of Christ. And and this would be a good um, well actually before before I even just start asking you fun random questions um, maybe you just introduce yourself and and like who are you uh, what do you do all that good stuff yeah yeah oh goodness sakes who are we we're observers of divine consciousness <laughs> we're spirits having a a human experience you know our minds were wiped we incarnated and and here we are getting to discover it all for the first time all over again discovering who we are and purpose of life you know and i and i i'll tell you this much that you know and, and this isn't really answering your question yet but we'll get to that I'll, I'll i was remembering a scripture verse that meant a lot to me that really helped bring me into my purpose and life um in in colossians it says all things were made by jesus and for jesus like jesus the creator for some reason that just really struck me like what he's the, he's the creator like and it says it three times like in john chapter one colossians and in hebrews chapter one talking about jesus specifically as the creator the son through whom all creation and all things were made by him and for him i i saw myself in that verse and it gave me uh meaning and purpose to be to be connected in relationship with the one who made me for himself, you know? So that, that was beautiful. So yeah, I, I, I guess my roles, I'm a husband and father to three wonderful, beautiful kids. They're so amazing. The light of my life. I was just reviewing actually uh, my, <laughs> my, you know, like how Facebook does this memories like eight, eight years ago, yep. my eight years ago, my two or three year old, she was th three at the time. I, I told her, now don't don't tickle Papa because you got claws and you you really scratch them up and just tickle me through the shirt or something and and she's like, but then your shirt would have a bunch of holes in it. <laughs> you know, it's like it. all the cute things, uh, you know, and and the precious, beautiful moments you you get to share with these little little souls as you as you nurture and protect their 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 life, their hope, you know, and uh, you know. Uh, passing on this this life is beautiful remember that movie i don't know if you remember that movie i don't think i watched that yeah it's, i think it's like a, a foreign film italian or something maybe the subtitle or something but but it, he uh, ended up going to a concentration camp and his and he and he kind of snuck his son in with him and hid him in the barracks and you know made the whole thing into a game and it, you know and into fun for his his son you know, and kept that that his own spark and and life alive just to to nurture his son's hope, even though they're in a desperate situation. You know, and uh, I just feel like that's our that's our responsibility for our children. You know, is to do that, not to to ruin their lives with with burdening them down or, um, you know, uh, wounding their souls in any way with uh, 
you know, with, with whatever we allow or whatever comes through and, you know, we're here to protect them. So that's, all, that's basically it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a father. I'm a musician, as you can see from the guitars on the wall. Um, I guess the biggest thing about me is, is the, the Christian mystic aspect of, I'm just like, I love experiencing, uh, you know, the depths and, and, and of, of Christ in such a way to, 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 that your eyes are open, that it's like, it's like, it's beyond just surfacy religion. You know, it's, it's, this is a really personal dynamic relationship that we, we share with with the one in whom we live and move and have our being that's one of my favorite scriptures you know from act 17 yeah. and what's really just to interject what's crazy about that is uh paul that's not even technically scripture yeah. because paul's quoting a, a greek poet yes he is and yeah. I, I researched that that poet you know he quotes two of them maybe the same guy twice i, I you know i can't i can't say for certain right now but but it was crazy because this guy had a very mystical experience in a, you know, like as the legend goes, like he went into a cave and just went into a trance and, and, and came out, you know, 20 years later or something like that. You know, that's, that's the legend about him. But, but he ended up sharing all these revelations and, 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 and he was a prophet of the Lord. You know, he experienced the one true God and, and the, which, to which Paul attests to, you know, and so, so none of this happened in a in isolation, you know. None of uh, there's people people who have experienced God in different facets of God all over the planet, you know. And this is, uh, you know, and and there's truth everywhere in every culture, and all truth is God's truth. And what I'm about is reclaiming our birthright and our inheritance as a son of God by recognizing, you know, hey, truth is. In the in the chakras you know i see you have a picture behind you of those you know uh yeah that that that's amazing that's awesome i once had a vision of exactly that you know uh a dream rather so a vision in the night a dream where i was in a mental hospital you know looking out these bars uh in the door at a huge poster picture of you know, on the side of a building of, of that image of, of a man sitting there with, and, you know, with the chakra colors, kind of the outline of a man with the chakra colors going up, but it was all like this dark roots and, and soot and, and everything was blocking and choking the life flow of, of the spirit, you know, and then, and then a mighty wind blew through that represented the Holy spirit and cleared all of that away. And all the chakra lights just lit up and, the, the energy of the, the spirit and the tordial field of the human spirit, uh, you know, started flowing unhindered as it should. Huh? So, yeah. Well, I would love to talk more about what you mean when, because it, it does seem like some of the things that you say are, are kind of unorthodox. Some of the things are very orthodox, but, you know, talking about truth in every culture and about the chakras, of course, people would, be very quick to label you a heretic and, and it's demonic and, and xyz what what are you like when you say there's truth in every culture um what what do you mean well he always responds to anyone who who seeks and so it's going to have a certain flavor in different cultures um you know i'm not one to say that any religion has it right because because it's it, they, they're all broken to some extent, you know, but they all have nuggets of truth as well that, that God has been speaking, you know, and what would, what would a true faith look like, you know, prior to, uh, to any scripture, you know, it talks about like in, in, you know, uh, in the lineage of Noah, you know, like, uh, these people before the flood that that they were calling upon the name of the Lord. What would that look like? What would their faith look like? It, I think it would be very mystical. You know, uh, I, I watched this uh, this documentary last night. Um, I think it was called The Last Forest, and it was about these people group uh, in the Amazon, and and they, and it shows in one scene that they were doing 
they were doing rape, you know, or something, you know, like, uh, What's rape? And, well, they blow this stuff into their nose and it just, it just awakens them to, uh, the spiritual realms, you know, to kind of just mm. experience, uh, spirits now, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, oh my gosh, it, without the protection of our good shepherd and overseer of our soul, uh, we're, you know, we're always, we would be in, in, in mortal danger of, of all that surrounds us, you know, spiritually, there's a lot of hmm. beings that would seek to do us harm. And the thing is Christ does offer every single one of us a measure of protection. He does all the time. He, the whole fact that any of us are alive is testament to that. So he's, he's on the job. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, I don't know. I think that he's very gracious as well to allow us to experience uh, truth of that. So I'm, as I'm watching that, I'm like, what are they connecting to? Cause it, cause on the surface, it seems very strange, but I've, I've experienced being in a trance like they were, you know, and I knew how precious and wonderful it was to me. And I know how probably I looked to everyone else around me, you know, but that, you know, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. like it looks great. It looks crazy. <laughs> yeah. But it's amazing. And you, and you love the, the expressing this, like it's, it's a tremendous release of your own spirit to connect with 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 jesus in the spirit with the host of heaven you know and i would love to get into all that you know share yeah. some of my story uh, absolutely you know uh before before we do that i have a challenging question for you good really challenging one here um one that i think about so i just to let you know where i'm coming from i don't have any grid for for like angels or spirit guys experientially i've just never I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen one. Um, but so you're saying that there's these evil spirits out there. And of course the Bible talks about them and a lot of cultures do. How do we know whether a spirit is good or bad? I think that's a, that'd be a challenging yes. question. Yes. And here's how I would, I would respond to that. Those who live in love, live in God and God in them. You know, and that applies to everyone who, who hasn't even heard the name of Jesus yet. You know, I, I would say ultimately the name of Jesus, the essence of Jesus is love, right? Because God is love. Jesus is the exact representation. You know, greater love has known than this than to lay down his life for his friends. And what has he done? He's laid down his life for his friends. You know, so here is the epitome example of love. If you want to know what God is like, look to Jesus, right? So, but, you know, not everyone's heard the name. And maybe not all the beings in the, in the heavenly realms have heard the name, you know. But if they're living in love, they're living in God and God in them. So God is love, right? And yeah. so that's ultimately if it's... Uh, now, the thing about it is, though, you know, it says that the en enemy parades around as an angel of light, you know, and so do her servants, deceptive, you know, like, oh, we love you. We have your best interest at heart, you know, and we'll show you this. We'll give you, we'll show you a good time. Even You're going to enjoy hanging out with us, you know, and, and you do, uh, you know, and, uh, but it's such a, a trap, you know, of like, they, they, they want, to, you know, uh, the enemy seeks to, to keep you from the fullest expression of coming to know uh, Christ, you know, Jesus Christ. I put emphasis on Jesus Christ because we're talking about the man, uh, the incarnation, the, the son of God, you know. And there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, ignore that and uh, just talk about, well, I'm okay with the Christ consciousness, but not the physical Jesus. And I'm like, no, um, here we have the incarnation of, of everything uh, Father intended. That's that's straight from source. The in incarnation of the Father's heart, as I like to say, you mm -hmm. know, in, in Christ Jesus. 
And there's a lot of emphasis placed on this in the apostles' writing as well about the, the humanity of God. So let me let me ask this. You know what? Because there's there's I'm sure there's a lot of you know quote unquote light workers, people who don't really new age people who don't really um read the Bible, go to church, right? Um do man, I was going somewhere with this and I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. So for, for people who maybe have like an aversion to Christ and and I certainly sometimes still do, you know, and still have doubts. You know, what would you say to people that that are averted and what like what's unique about Christ? Why does Christ need to be central into our in our spirituality? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. Um, because God has made a statement, you know, and, and he you know, in Psalm two comes to mind to mind where he says, I've established my king on my holy hill, and all the kings of the earth they counsel take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, the Christ. That's what the Christ means, anointed. This is the anointed king uh, of all the universe, right? So he's established uh, He's established something. And so to reject Christ would be re to reject Father, your source. It would be to reject love. And once, as soon as you're rejecting love, my goodness, what are you, what are you left with? Hopelessness, mm -hmm. despair. I mean, this is where it ends up. And, and and this breaks my heart for for everyone. I I seek to help people, uh, you know, to to connect them to Christ, who is our hope. You have no idea how precious this has become to me, especially because I've been so challenged with with years of despair and depression and hopelessness. Mm. You know, to come to know Jesus. Jesus is my hope, and he's the hope of the whole world, the scriptures say. He's the hope of all the nations. He's actually the desire of all the nations. He's what everyone truly wants. And we're all gonna be, we're all gonna be moved to tears when we when we see him and we realize, yeah, oh my gosh, why did I ever ignore you? Why did I waste so much time? Why did I neglect so great a salvation? You know, like the scriptures say. You know, and of course, there's consequences that play out in our lives. I mean, the scripture says that anyone who doesn't love the Lord Jesus, and they, um, there's a curse on them. It's just a natural side effect of like not receiving and loving Jesus is that we, we live under a, you know, we live, we're choosing some version of hell. <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, and, it, and I would argue that even earth is a, you know, based on my research and near-death experience studies, which I've studied, uh, you know, since two, 2012. So it's been a, you know, I've encountered uh, thousands of testimonies uh, and interviewed several as well on my show. Um, one of the things they talk about is that Earth is a low vibe realm. It's like, this is like baby boot camp. Uh, and it's really like a form of Hades. You know, this is not, this is why we pray though, because God's into heaven invading earth or, you know, raising the frequency, raising the vibration, uh, you know, into love of any realm and every realm. You know, there's, there's a reformation happening to all realms of hell, you know, and, and as we, uh, as we move up, as we're willing to, you know, and we're in this, transitionary phase right now the enemy knows it that's why he's pull out, pulled out all the stops and is trying to stop this great awakening and then not only that but like inoculating everyone against the awakening you know like assuming the word woke to mean something entirely different than it should or uh assuming you know the great awakening they'll those those QAnon folk, they'll talk about the Great Awakening, you know, and then and then making it all QAnon, you know, whatever. That's an inoculation against the the vibrancy, the life that that Jesus intends for our hearts to be aflame with the goodness of God, the goodness of God being revealed, the goodness of God, the mercy and forgiveness. You know, the fact that any of us can come to him right now, you know, and and just receive such love, such peace. I mean, Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, 
the world can't even give you this this kind of peace that I can give you my peace I give to you do not let your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid hmm. you know and that that's huge when you oh, that's huge when you uh, uh, I almost want to swear because I'm like mind f yourself by by feeding on all this this garbage like you could go on you know like they're out to kill us and uh, this this new world order and you know blah, 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 you know the vaccine and blah 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 all this stuff that potentially is well this is the enemy trying to squelch the awakening and to really kill us you know he wants us dead he I, you know the thief comes to steal kill and destroy but i have come jesus says that you may have life and life to the full and of course for every for every malady that the enemy would throw at us jesus has a remedy he, he has a remedy for every malady the enemy would bring us mm. so there's there's cures for covid i mean i've been i've been thinking about uh, you know, just even miraculously, I've been thinking about people from the past, like John G. Lake or John Wimber, the founder of the Vineyard Movement, and how his healing ministry began, and how other people started moving in the healing ministry. You know, with with a with a with a gift that any of any of us all can respect because of their the the dignity and honor that these these men and women possess. You know, that they're not out to Shanghai anybody or fleece the sheep or, you know, rape anybody's will, but just give her, give her, give her. Because this is the heart of God to give, 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 give. Never I'm take. curious. I'm curious if you think that um, healing is God's will, because I know there are camps out there that would. And I used to be a part of that. Um, uh, I would say 100 percent, 100 percent, you know, healing is God's will. I'm just curious on what your thoughts are. Well, it's interesting to note that when he's talking to Moses in the burning bush scenario that he takes credit for <laughs> um, maladies that people uh, have. So uh, it, it's, it's bizarre to think about uh, how the enemy kind of plays into God's whole plan or like that he even re assumes responsibility for the enemy as an aspect of himself now there's now there's a oh interesting there's a point that would that would get a little uh, ruffle yeah. some feathers i'm sure uh -huh. but that god is all and in all and and there isn't anything that isn't god if, if jesus is the creator and and it was out of god himself that he created and then so everything has this divine dna you know in in all of life is is, is him in him we mm. live and move and have our being what do you think it means i mean like 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 even the construct of this matrix is is him you know every everything every aspect and even the enemy and all these fallen angels and i'm i for one have 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 gleaned a lot of hope from the message of ultimate reconciliation from scripture that the Lord is loving toward all he has made. He makes everything beautiful in his time. There's no one abandoned by the Lord forever. Those are three verses in the scripture. I could go on and on and on. The, this plan for even evil spirits to be redeemed and come home. And people have witnessed it, and I've interviewed them on my show. <laughs> yeah, so that that is definitely fascinating because it's a very minority position for sure. Um, I'm I'm curious what what makes you very like, you know so confident in universal reconciliation, and well, like what is that, and what makes you so confident? Yeah, and there's another man who is quite confident as well. Uh, I like to talk, bring him up just because uh, David Bentley Hart. Is a, hmm. is, a, is a Greek scholar, a theologian. He actually wrote uh, his own version of the New Testament. And uh, he used very precise words, even though some of the words were archaic. You know, he's like, well, this archaic word was more precise to, to you know, the intention here and the meaning. And, and so he's like, 
you, you might you might want to read this with a dictionary in, at hand <laughs> you know so but he he as he poured through the new covenant scriptures he's like you guys if you don't see this oh my gosh you know like why have we why have we suppressed this in in so many of the translations you know that we have and he, he even translated like one verse um where it was uh and they will go away into eternal punishment you know and we have our own ideas of what that means right we think we know what that means but but how he translated that was age lasting chastisement see oh, the word very different yeah the word for punishment there is is a is a greek word that always is about reconciliation it's about correction it's about you know and so i i have for one uh, I'm thinking that a lot of these scenarios we call an everlasting hell, uh, you know, without end, blah, blah, blah. And I've experienced some of that. I've visited those places in dreams. I know that they're real. I know hell is real. And I even think this is a version of it because we're not, we're not, you know, it, ultimately in bliss yet. I mean, uh, heaven, uh, Jesus hasn't received the full revelation on this planet of what his sacrifice on the cross bought and paid for the title deed of the earth belongs to him as the book of revelation points out and of course he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to metanoia which is this greek word translated repentance but it means a transformation of our of our beings like a, a cucumber going to a pickle or a, <laughs> becoming a pickle or like a a, a, a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. This was a tremendous metaphor that early Christians had for what it means to be Christian, the transformation that happens. Uh, and he's on the job. He's doing it. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Wow. Thank you that my salvation isn't dependent on me, but it's dependent on my merciful and faithful high priest who interceded with his own blood on behalf of Justin, on behalf of Daniel, on behalf of every listener to this program right now. You know, with his own blood. And this is who I met in my vision two and a half years ago. I went into an open vision and Jesus Christ himself was coming to meet me. And I knew he was in that role. He made it known to me. I'm, I'm in the role of your merciful and faithful high priest. Big smile on his face. And he comes up to me and I, and I'm like, as I see him coming, I'm like, I want to live out of you. I want to live out of you. You know, I'm, I say that like three times at the top of my lungs and he says, you get to, you get to. And he, he comes up and he anoints me with his blood. He's like, Daniel, I got you. I got you. Did the sign of the cross on me, which was like an inside joke uh, to us. He's, he's got quite a sense of humor, but That's interesting. we went out, we, we went on a four or five hour adventure. You know, me and Jesus, we did a lot of inner healing work, you know, and, and inner healing is as simple as you letting things go. Hmm. You just, all right, I release that. Oh, I'm free. My goodness, that was easy. I didn't realize it would be that so simple. Letting it go, you know. That's so fat. That's really fascinating. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of David Hawkins, um, his book, Letting Go or Power Versus Force. Does that sound familiar hmm. at all? No, I haven't encounter that yeah so um there is this emotional scale that david hawkins he's a spiritual teacher that has come up with and the idea is once you start to let go you go up this emotional scale up into courage acceptance peace and love whatnot but th that was inner healing is as simple as letting go it just made me think of that book cool well thank yeah. you for uh, making reference to it for our listeners' sake, too, we could look up that book, David Hawking, Letting Go, is it? Yeah, Letting or, Go. All right. Cool. Yeah, we actually have a, a song on our album called Letting Go, as well, my wife wrote. And, yeah, so. But, uh, yeah. What else would you like to discuss, Justin? Yeah, I, I'd be interested in knowing, have you always been this spiritually sensitive? Have you always had these dreams and visions? Yeah. Um, well, my first encounter with the Lord happened, uh, well, my first real visitation, as I, as I put it, 
happened when I was a child of around 12 years old in my treehouse. This, uh, this ball of energy, divine consciousness, you know, just hovered in, you know, you know to, to come and greet me in my treehouse. And I knew it was God. I knew it was my father. And there was no, absolutely no judgment, you know, no judgment, only compassion, love, uh, like a confidence. He's not freaked out about any of us. Uh, heaven never partners with fear. That was a profound lesson I learned uh, even deeper recently. Heaven never partners with fear. So, so yeah, I've had these encounters and dreams as well. I felt like the enemy was after me. Much of my childhood, I uh, had a lot of demonic encounters, and uh, which made me all the more desperate for having a positive encounter. And so what did I do? I put a little effort in <laughs> to seek the Lord. And it says that God rewards those who diligently seek him. You know, and this is what, this is what we all need to do to stop neglecting so great a salvation. And by the way, that so great a salvation is Jesus himself. His, his very name means I am salvation. It's that divine name, Yahweh, paired with Shua, Yeshua, right? Um, which means I am salvation. Beautiful. So yeah, we ask yeah. and we seek and we knock and we keep on doing that. Go, go ahead. Yeah, so for for someone that's not maybe familiar with sal the term salvation, um, and I'm sure that's like a loaded term in in Christianity. Like, what do you mean when you say salvation? Oh, it's it's actually very loaded in the in the Greek um, and uh, and Hebrew. In Hebrew, it's Shua. In uh, Greek, it's Sozo, and that's that's actually formed uh, the basis of my my show. I was thinking of what should I name this, and I just got this divine download of Sozo Talk Radio. And it just sounded so cool and 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 uh, and like yeah i'm gonna go with that but this salvation is uh it, it involves so much i mean psalm 103 comes to mind the beginning verses of that where it says he heals all my diseases he forgives all my sins like think about that for a moment all right this is the intention and 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 some of this my friend is is kind of akin to what Morpheus said to Neo. It's time to let go of the doubt, the disbelief, you know, the unbelief. You know, why did you doubt? He chides Peter as Peter's walking on the water, you know, and, and starts to sink. Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And it's time to like do what scripture advises us to do. Fix your eyes on Jesus fall in love with them. Like once you're in love, like, like revelation chapter three talks about, look how far you've fallen. Like you return to your first love, right? Mm. Wow. To recognize you've been in a love relationship with Yeshua for eons, for eons, for millennia before you incarnated here. And you are given this divine gift of getting to experience it fresh and anew, meeting him and falling in love with your best friend, you know, with your best friend. Oh my gosh. Who never leaves you, who never forsakes you. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you always, you know? And that's what I, what I experienced. Even like, I remember these occasions where I'm like helping someone move I'm like, I feel the presence of Jesus so strong with me. I, I was convinced if I looked in a mirror, I'd see Jesus instead of me, you know, like, like Jesus is meant to, to just take up residence in us to such a, such a beautiful degree that it's like, we're little Christ's walking around the planet. You know, we're, we're true Christians when we're, when we're possessed by the spirit of Jesus and then walking in fellowship and in harmony. And you know who I admire most of all in this, on this, in this life is some of the motherly figures who have really dove into this, this walk with Christ, this relationship and how wonderfully intimate it can be, you know, and who experienced bliss like you wouldn't believe, like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, that she's chosen the better part, Jesus said. This is what we're all meant for. 
just to, to, to really experience him in such a beautiful, intimate way and in such a personal way. Like, like he knows you. He knows what kind of inside jokes you share, you know, like you and him. And, it, and it's about remembering uh, what, what you had before you even incarnated here, you know? Well, yeah, let's, let's talk about that because um, there are, well, I'd say most Christians would definitely frown upon uh, this concept <laughs> of reincarnation. Um, ah. what, yeah. What, what got you into that? And what, what do you know about reincarnation? Oh, thank you for asking. I had a hunch we were going to, we were going to end up discussing this because it, it's something that I want to enlighten people about because people think of it, um, in a, in a, in a kind of a wrong way, like sequentially. And, and honestly, uh, the host of heaven don't mind that we do if as long as we understand okay it's it's kind of bigger than that you don't quite have <laughs> you know the, the the fact of the matter is here's what happened to me this is this is the insight i was given into reincarnation and how this all works that and this is <laughs> this is this is the truth that you are connected to every point in space and time that we're part of the being of God. We're just an observation point that happens to take up residence in this avatar right now. But if you came out of your avatar, you know, here's, here's the imagery that was shown to me in my vision, that we're all like cells in the body of God, you know, billions and trillions of cells. And you're surrounded by other cells, which makes up a tissue. And you also are that tissue. That's you too. That's, that's mm -hmm. like an archangel. Okay, that tissue, that muscly sinew and the, the arm or something. That's what I picture. You know, but then that is the arm as well. Okay. And that's the whole body as well. And you realize, oh my gosh, the oneness that I share with the divine all, the oneness I share with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the intimacy that they've brought me into, that they've withheld nothing from me as an aspect of him. Now I got coached about this cause, cause one of the scriptures that, that really meant a lot to me for whatever reason that was highlighted to me is when Jesus brings up in John 10, Psalm 82, six, where he says, I say, you are Elohim. All of you are sons of the most high God. Elohim is, is the plural word for God. Every time you see God throughout the Bible, it's, 99 times out of 100, Elohim, which is talking about the plurality of God, which includes what doesn't it include at the end of the day? You know, even the broken, lost, and fragments of him that need desperate healing, that are in self-destruct mode, and I'm going to destroy you mode, you know, they're part of him too. You know, even Satan himself, he takes responsibility for, I believe, you know. Like, that's a lost and broken fragment of the divine being. You know, you have to go there. I mean, because if this is true, it's true across the board. There's no one left out of this. Anyway. Yeah. So, there. I mean, there are people um, who would, they're not Christian, and they would echo the same sentiment as what you're saying. That, that it's like almost as if God is, that we're all God just kind of playing out this, is drama of life. Would that be accurate? Like a video yeah. game or something like that? Yeah. And to get plugged into your character is what we're here for. I was once like in an Ascension. Uh, and as I was ascending <laughs> in my spirit, they asked me, Daniel, what are you doing? And I was like, I thought this was what you wanted. And I was being willing to die. I was being willing to actually leave my physical body behind and have my friends deal with my corpse. <laughs> you know, wow. as, as terrifying as that was, I thought, if this is what you want, God, I do believe you could raise me from the dead, you know, jumpstart my heart and all that. Um, as I was ascending, I said, Daniel, 
you know, the, the suggestion was made that I was usurping the throne. I was like, oh, I guess I don't want to do that. And then they said to me, Daniel, we incarnated as you to have this experience. And we're not, we're not, you're, the goal is not to leave, but to stay and to be, to experience, to have the fullness of this experience, to experience the richness of this experience and this abundant life. You know, and of course, we're constantly thwarting ourselves because we have such a proclivity towards horror and we manifest horror uh, upon ourselves in all various forms. And this is kind of what sin is. It's kind of missing the point. Like we're here to learn love, you know, and sin is anything that's not in congruency with love. You know, and uh, so, okay, back to my illustration about reincarnation to answer your question more fully. Um, so once I was there with Jesus in my experience, right? And he said, well, Daniel, now that you're here, what what do you want to know? Where do you want to go? You know, uh, what do you want to so see? So where, where was this? Was this like in heaven, a different I was in I was in the canvas space, you know, like, like the black... Um, it's like black, but yet comforting and like a warm blanket. And of course there were, there was Jesus there and there was other divine beings, you know, kind of in the periphery. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like a astral plane of some sort, I suppose. And, and he, and he says, well, where do, what do you want to see? What do you want to know? And I said, well, how about the throne room? And he took me there. We like teleported there to a distance, you know, and I'm beholding all this flurry of activity and I'm like, ah, I'm freaking out, you know, like, like Neo is about to pop and Jesus came to my rescue. He's like, okay, I know what you need. And so he took me to meet my soul family. Now this is where reincarnation comes into play. Okay. He took me to meet my soul family. And there was all these thousands of beings all around me. You know, like stadium seating kind of thing. This is the visual that was presented to me so that I could see them and they could all see me. <coughs> Excuse me. And they all were standing over portals to their own matrix of experience. And I saw very clearly that this they went to other universes and to other planets and to other points in human history. And my overwhelming first response at seeing them all was, oh, it's me. See, but I am currently, you. yeah, they're me and I'm, I'm them and they're me. And, oh, it's me, my soul family. This is, this is the cell realizing I'm the tissue. I am this conglomerate of cells, this, this close knit family this community, this tribe among the hosts of heaven. And we have our own languages too. And that came into play right from the get go. We, uh, I burst into speaking in tongues when I, when I went into this experience and whenever they would speak with me, it would be in tongues in this language, this heavenly language. That was kind of one of our favorites, you know, maybe we just, liked it. I'm sure we had several to choose from, and that is probably my personal favorite, <laughs> which is why they were communicating with me in it. Um, and you could understand them. Perfect. Yes, perfectly. I had perfect clarity <laughs> about everything that was being said in tongues, you know, and uh, that was amazing. And uh, so whenever anyone wanted to speak with me, my consciousness would shift from my being, you know, to them. And I would be speaking out of them to the soul, Daniel, huh. to the, to the newborn. Cause it was like, I was born again, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, that takes on, <laughs> takes on a whole new meaning of John yeah. three. Right. Uh, yeah. What so, exactly. Okay, so are these soul family human? Well, some of them are. Um, 
you know, and some of them are from different universes and different planets. So there's other sentient beings from other planets. I have had encounters with uh, a couple of them. Um, one was a gray alien that was in my house that the Lord showed me. And that was, that was when I was awake. So, but I was seeing it through this eye. Yeah. Not these eyes. <laughs> So that's what it means to be a seer is to like see into the spiritual realm with their third eye. Yeah. So my, my friend is really into aliens. He's convinced that, that the government has data on the UFO and they visited and, and we have accounts yeah. of aliens. You think that, you know, aliens are, are angels of some sort or hosts of heaven or even perhaps yeah. demons. Yeah. Even perhaps demons. And see, this is what I was going to say earlier about who, how can we trust any of these beings or creatures? Yeah. You know, what I've come to is, does your loyalty and devotion lie with the Lord Jesus Christ or not? That's the delineating factor. You Interesting. Know? And, so, and all, so, yeah. Go so do you think that all of these, um, I guess these, these other entities, they're all loyal to Christ? Like they all know who Christ is and, and the ones out. that I was experiencing. Yes. And there were thousands of them. Now, what they told me is there are lost and fallen elements of our own soul family that we're in the business of redeeming. We're going in search for them. Like the Christ does the good shepherd who leaves the 99 and, and goes in search of the one we're going in search of them. We're bringing them reconciliation, redemption, to the lost and fallen among our brothers. So there you have it. It's like, even in your own body, it's not like every cell is healthy, right? There's a lot right. that are um, in need of ministry. <laughs> so so yeah. did, did Jesus die for not only humanity, but all, also mm -hmm. these other planets or realms and things like that? I think so. I think in so. the same way that the scripture says, Jesus says, I haven't come, but only for the lost sheep of Israel. Right? He said that. That's right. But then he says in John 10, he's like, but I have other sheep. You know? True. Sheep. True. So yeah. who all does that include? You know, and um, goodness sakes. There's even a scripture in Hebrews that does say it wasn't for angels that that he died or something like that I, I have to look that up you know because this is this is just me being completely honest with scripture i do hold scripture in high regard as we all should jesus held scripture in high regard and he authorized and his spirit you know holy men were moved by the holy spirit to write these scriptures so i do uh, you have to balance the equations <laughs> you know of that and keep yourself honest so, uh, I don't know, <laughs> but I'd like to think so that, that his sacrifice is really for all of creation and, and he's the creator of all, all things were made by him and for him, every being in every universe. And, you know, th this is actually one of the low, low vibe, low frequency planets. That's actually in a transition of raising into a higher mm. higher frequency things are going to get a whole lot better i mean i've i've interviewed people who have had visions uh with jesus they had encountered like i did with jesus in the heavenly realms and they saw they asked about the future and jesus showed them the future a couple hundred years from now and it's and it's peaceful communities and lots of magic happening, you know, like planting a cabbage seed and meditating and sending the cabbage seed love and light and this cabbage just growing up in a matter of minutes and you pick it for your dinner. Hmm. You know, we're all dressed simply and it's nothing, no, no, no materialism. No, you know, we're not, you know, harming each other with, with, with greed and, and, and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, yeah. The future is bright, my friend. That's good news, man. Yeah. That's good. Uh, 
this is that's interesting where you said you said magic and being able to make that cabbage grow just by love so and i'm sure you get this objection many times uh that this is you know mag this magic stuff is evil this is a cult occultism how can you preach that kind of thing <laughs> to which i laugh no <laughs> okay jesus walking on water that's pretty magical right it's, it's understanding the nature that this is you. I once went for a walk uh, by uh, on this on the lake shore up in Door County. And, and the Lord specifically said to me, he says, Daniel, look all around you. I'm like, all right, look all around me. And he says, this is all you. It's like, change your relationship with you. Wow. Start to love and appreciate you. <laughs> Start to partner with you, you know, and, and you can walk on water. You know, I had dreams about my children walking on water. They're out there playing, you know, and I looked at the water and I saw the, the grid, the, the six sided grid map of the surface of the water. And I was like, huh. You know, if you, if you start to understand things about the matrix, Jesus said, speak to this mulberry tree to be uprooted and thrown into the sea and it'll be done for you. If you believe without doubt, this is a very matrixy thing, isn't it? That yeah. Jesus is saying, this is Morpheus talking to Neo here. And what now am I there yet completely? Of course not. No. I'm not. <laughs> I need to ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. The doors will be opened. You'll seek, you'll find what you're seeking for. You'll get what you're asking for. And then the angel said, we're about to open doors for you. Be careful which doors you knock on. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me ask what your thoughts are on, on free will free will is a thing yeah do we have free god, will <laughs> god is sovereign and so are you now i just uh, now honestly i just basically kind of just suggested that you're god well jesus did now here's what here's where i got coached though because our ego does horrible things mm -hmm. when we say we're god our ego ego does horrible things with that and so they they were saying it's very helpful for you, for you to keep in this mind Keep this in mind. You are not God, but God is you. You are not God, but God is you. And they went over this lesson over and over and over again with me, you know, as I'm getting coached in my in my dream. By by these spirit guides. Yeah, by the spirit guides. Mm -hmm. And and so they were they were lending something very helpful because, because we're very ill-equipped in our dullardliness to handle the reality of who we really are, you know, as Simba, remember who you are. You know, if you remember who you are, you'd just be flying around and you might be having, you'd be having a lot of fun. <laughs> you'd be like, you'd be like Captain Marvel. I'm serious. You're endowed with that kind of power. And this is the bride of Christ remembering who she is, recognizing, oh my gosh, the enemy is terrified that you would find out who you are. So stop feeding on all of the trash. My friend put it this way. There's a pile of shit and there's a bouquet of flowers. What do you want to, where do you want to spend your focus on? Oh, the world mm. is, the enemy is offering you that shit. He's throw, trying to throw it in your face. Guess what? You're, you're protected. You're shielded. It doesn't, Jesus can answer the door on that one. Okay. When the enemy comes knocking, Jesus, can you get the door for me? All right, you're protected. The enemy doesn't want to come near you when you're walking in, in fellowship with Jesus Christ. You're so, you're like, you're singeing them. They're like, they want to get away from you, right? Lest they lose their power. If they want to stay dark, they got to stay away from the light. So your job is to shine bright, brother. You know, hmm. and, that's you just a matter. Manifest, manifest and that's just a matter of focus. Of yeah, intent. It's all these two. These two words it comes down to intention and attention. You know, one of the things I 
I uh, like to use that <laughs> phraseology with intention and attention is to go on spiritual adventures, like to be a ministering angel. Uh, uh, anyway, I interviewed somebody about that on my channel, uh, Dr. Bruce Allen, about spirit travel and teleportation. Teleportation is real. You can upload your uh, person into the, your oversoul and then download your person from your oversoul to any point in, in time space continuum. You know, and this is what happened to Philip on the road uh, in Acts chapter 8. That's you right. Know? Translated. And even Jesus and his disciples teleported across mm -hmm. the lake. It says when Jesus came into the boat, immediately their boat was at shore. They teleported to shore. Like boom. Yeah. Oh. You know, so these are these so, things are possible. So for for you know, because this definitely sounds like fantastic. You know, I haven't seen uh, teleportation myself. Um, how and I know you were talking about focus, like intention, attention, and having the faith of mustard seed. How do we, other than that, like, how do we, you know, have these kind of spiritual experiences that, that you have? Yeah, it's a matter of getting hungry and it's a matter of, uh, you know, just saying, Jesus, I'd like to get to know you. And guess what? Guess what? I got some great news for you. Jesus. Okay. This is incredible. I, I, I brag on my Jesus. Okay. He visited me. This was amazing. And in just a very tangible, real way, uh, I woke up one morning and he, there he was to greet me with these words. He says, Daniel, go and tell all your friends if they want to get to know me. And then he gave me a vision of me holding up the Gospel of John and pointing to chapter one. Read the Gospel of John over and over again. Like, like, like he gave me the illustration of Naaman who came to Elisha to be healed of his leprosy, you know, and, and we got something worse than leprosy going on most of the time with, with, with lusts and greed and, and loss of vision and, you know, all the stuff that weighs us down, all the troubles that weigh us down in this life that we've heap on ourselves. Cause we're, we have a proclivity towards horror. So, why not do as Naaman did, who dipped himself seven times? He was told, go dip seven times in the Jordan River. What would, it, you know, what would it mean for any of us to dip our souls in the Gospel of John seven times? Go, go read it seven times through. Do you really want to get to know Jesus or not? You know, he, he doesn't, this isn't fast food spirituality. He rewards those who diligently seek him. So ask and keep on asking. And there's there's persistence implied there. It's not just ask, seek, and knock. It's ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. And you'll receive. The door will be open to you. And you'll you'll get to start ad adventuring. <laughs> I want to adventure more. It requires a little diligence on our part. This is not, this is preparing a fine meal, not fast food spirituality. You know, and and creating the capacity for what the Lord wants to give us. That's what persistence does. That's the that's the point in the time delay. It's actually also to test: Do you really want this? That's why we have such a delay in this experience. This is our testing. What do you really want? What do you want? Are you talking okay. on in terms of like manifesting? Manifesting. Mm. Yes. Yes. And unfortunately, we've been hijacked. The enemy knows our manifesting powers as co-creators with God. And so he, he uses us to spread his message and to manifest for him through fear. See, and I'm, I told you earlier, heaven doesn't partner with fear. Oh, how hard it is. We're so addicted to fear. We love it for some reason. We get off on it like, like lust and fear. You know, um, time to leave those things behind and uh, ascend into something more blissful than anything we could have possibly imagined. You know, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, but God is preparing for those who love him. Ooh, 
There's a little intrigue in that, but it says, but the spirit reveals it. The spirit's anxious to reveal it right now to you if you want. Requires your attention and intention to be fixed on Jesus. I thought, did I not mention that earlier? Fix your eyes on Jesus and the author and perfecter of our faith. Right. Look to Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Wow, you have no idea how protected you are when you do that. None of this fear stuff can touch you. None of that worry matters anymore. Give him back his stuff, right? That he died for. Give me back my stuff, Jesus says. That was actually a really powerful lesson. I encourage you all to look up uh, on YouTube, Graham Cook, give me back my stuff. He has an encounter with Jesus in the heavenlies where Jesus really confronted him about that. He's like, all that stuff I died for, your worry, your fear, your, you know, your, your resentment of others, your envy, mm. your jealousy. Now, jealousy has no place in heaven, and I'll tell you why. Because that's another version of you experiencing that good thing. That's a good point. Yeah. That's you. You can rejoice in that. So we can rejoice with those who rejoice. We can weep with those who weep when we realize our oneness that we share with all the hosts of heaven. And is, is giving back all of that envy and, and jealousy, resentment, is that simply just a matter of letting go? Yeah, it's letting oh. go. And then it, and it's just enjoying him, you know, because we, we get to enjoy. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, it goes like this. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends with God. Romans 5.11, NLT version. And, uh, you know, I've experienced this in uh, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Once you get a taste of that. Wow. Yeah. 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 And um, by the way, how are you on time? I know you got fine. <laughs> I'm my schedule is cleared because of this cold. I, I can't go to work. So, oh, geez, <laughs> that bad. Well, you know, I just don't want to get anybody else sick. And in this day and age, you know, it's like you treat anybody with a cold like you're right. Yeah. <laughs> got you. Um, I love to uh, know about the Akashic Records and, and what that has to do with spirituality. Absolutely. How can we access that? Absolutely. Now, I once once I met my tribe of the hosts of heaven, I wanted everybody to have this experience. I wanted everybody to know how loved you are, how cared for you are by by beings who are like older brothers and. Oh, they're family. They love you. They wish the highest and best good for you. They're ready to teach you any time you show up for class. Just show, show up for class. Say, say, God, what's on your mind today? What, Father, what's on your mind today? You know, what's on your heart? What do you want? What do you want to pray into? What do you want to manifest either for or against? You know, because you could like, you could like manifest against dolphin poaching. That was one of the things me and the host of heaven manifested against one time because it was on his heart he doesn't like it he doesn't like dolphin poaching right he told me that they told me that see i'm communing with i'm communing with, i'm communing with a they all of a sudden it's not just father son and holy spirit but there's like thousands of other beings in this family that's why i call them the host of heaven and they're spirit guides and you they've some of them have been with you all your life some of them rotate in and out of your life as needed they're always there to help you know, in times of need, this is, this is mainly who we have interaction with. Now it's Jesus in you and it's Jesus in them. One of the things they showed me, and this answers your question about the living Akashic records. Okay. Cause, cause Jesus, Jesus at one point in my vision, he says, I'm appointing this one as your teacher to one of the, the spirit guide guys. Right. And I said, but Jesus, didn't you say that I have one teacher, the Christ? And he says, Daniel, don't you get it? And he like vanished, you know, he like, you know, it melted into the floor and went over and then popped up into this guy. And he says, I inhabit him. I animate him. Mm. Christ, who is your life? Christ, who is your life? Right? Oh, wow. And then he, he popped up into other words and he's like, and I inhabit him and I inhabit him and I inhabit and animate you, Daniel. And then he pops up into me and, you know, just like, whoa. 
okay, wow, this is amazing. You know, and I've experienced that so many times since of just like Jesus just being so present. It's like, oh, he's right here. He's in me. This is amazing. You know? So the living Akashic records is every life ever lived in every universe. It's like matrix downloads mm -hmm. relationally. Now, if we have the faith capacity to receive this, though, now some have to be pretty much unconscious to have the faith to receive this. I'm thinking of Casey, Edgar Casey. That's right. He went unconscious. He was known as the sleeping prophet. <laughs> and he connected to the host of heaven. All right. To get all these medical advice, you know, which is mostly holistic medicine. He was known as the father of holistic medicine and also known as the grandpappy of the new age. Now, I love oh. that. This hmm. all of a sudden casts the new age in a, in a Christian and redeemed light for us all. Okay. The new age, he is bringing us into a new age, you know. Some people who are so leery about this term, they'll call it the next age. I'm, I'm part of a group on Facebook called the next agers, right? So we're calling it the next age instead of new age. Same diff. It's, <laughs> it's the new age. Yeah. It's the new age Jesus is bringing us into. The age of Aquarius where the water of God's goodness is being poured out and revealed. Now, what does it do to those who are very stubborn in their anti-loveness? very stubborn they won't they won't let go of this anti-loveness for the life of them well oh my goodness it's going to be miserable for them the goodness of mm. god is going to be torturous for them because they're going to come to see themselves in a way that makes them hate themselves so severely and they won't be able to they won't be able to reconcile that so they'll project it out and they're like i hate you for being a mirror to me Oh, how ugly I've become in my clinginess to all this anti-loveness, sin. Hmm. You know? So is Jesus uh, a mirror of whoever we are? Or he's mirroring whoever that's, we are to, that's to bring a, us that's up? That's a great thought to explore. And and, and oftentimes I, I, I talk with my wife about a lot of spiritual topics and, and we'll just we'll just frame it in that way. Here's a thought experiment. You know, and just kind of like put put that kind of stuff out there and let it sit. Let the mystery dance for a while, you know? Don't be so quick to, to come up with conclusions. Oh my gosh. Stop making conclusions. Live with the mystery for a decade or two, <laughs> you know, or more. You know, like, why, why are we so addicted to conclusions oftentimes? You know, it's like... Just let that mystery live with you. Let the tension be there. Like, hmm, free will and fate. <laughs> that sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, when you were first um, talking about how God isn't everything and we're like cells of God, even the these evil spirits are some aspect of God, it sounded very Calvinistic. I'm not going to lie. Hmm. But I know you you do affirm free will as well. <laughs> you know, okay, okay. I, I'm just going to tell you, like, I have heard quotes about how did the church ever survive the blight of Calvinism? You know, like, <laughs> like that's kind of the, the perspective I've adopted over the years for whatever reason. It's not, that, not to say that we can't learn something from uh, Calvin. And I'm sure he, you know, in, in light of the dark ages in which he dwelt, he was probably a, a bright shining beacon of, something better than uh, you know the, the the evil that surrounded him in that in that DNA or whatever but but still he framed the whole gospel in in uh, in courtroom terms I mean he was a lawyer so this is how he framed the gospel and it, it I, I just don't find it very helpful as, as as helpful as as some of the ways that the scripture itself frames the gospel um, and even Redefining words such as, uh, uh, what, what was it? Propitiation. Mm -hmm. You know, when you really look at what propitiation really is all about, um, expiation is more of a, a, a better way of framing that. You know, propitiation is like 
Jesus was God's whipping boy. He was really angry about our sin. And so he took out all his wrath on, on Jesus. When really, no, uh, the Christ on the cross was not, I want to frame this right. I, I have a, this, uh, there's this quote that just so put it succinctly. The cross was not what? Well, let me just skip to the end, I guess. I can't figure out the first part. The, the cross was what Christ experienced to reconcile the world. And he was experiencing all of our wrath, all of our... Remember how I said mm. we, we, we were allergic to looking at ourselves, and so we projected out, and he became the scapegoat. And we took out all our wrath and how much we hated ourselves on Jesus. So he experienced the wrath of God, all right, our wrath. All the lost and broken fragments of God in broken, lost, fallen humanity. Wow. You know? So it's not sinners in the hand and hands of angry God, right. but but the opposite. God, God in the hands of angry sinners. Mm. God in the hands of angry sinners. And he did that to show us how much he loved us. Okay, son, let me have it. Everything you're feeling, let me have it. I can take it. I can take it. And he did it. And he did it. And he took it to the grave. And it is finished. Right? And he rose again. You know what? You know what his resurrection says to me? He's like, he's like a Marine. This is not a man left behind, right? He's like that. If he if he descended into hell, he's like, I'm not leaving until I bring you all with me. You know, he's not willing that any should perish. I'm not leaving. And he left. So what does that tell you? That your highest self is a done deal. Your highest self, Justin, is already fully redeemed. Fully redeemed. You're, when Christ, who is your life, appears, you also will appear with him in glory. You also will appear with him in glory. Like what? Wow. Okay. So you have a highest self that's already right there in the creamy center of God's goodness. You couldn't be higher or closer to the source of love. Our Father, whom Jesus talked about and said, yes, I'm ascending to my God and your God, to my Father and to your Father. What did he teach us to pray? Our Father who is in heaven. So he was, he was redeeming us all. He's saying, you can all pray this. You can all pray this. And he's the reason why? I mean, when you when you start to unpack the intricacies of, and, and the beauty of the gospel and what he pulled off for us, and just the beauty of his being, I love knowing Jesus. I love encountering Jesus. I love the little the little visitations. You know how, it, like 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 he'll step outside of me just to be like, you know, have this encounter. Right, but he's been with me all along. He's been with you all along. It's it's he's, he's he's playing a game. Yeah, yeah, he's playing a game. It's all a game. And yeah, and it's time that we started becoming more childlike and play the game right along with him. Enjoy every step of this. I'm saying this in light of everything the enemy is trying to do and all how he's trying to distract you, you know, and what Austria is going through and Australia and all these other places on the planet with lockdowns and. Uh, totalitarian regimes, you know, like what? I thought that was a democracy. What's going on? You know, uh, you know, trying to distract us from this great awakening that we're in the midst of. It's happening. It's happening. And sometimes it's like, it's like, all right, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Why to shake off all of the crap, all of the, the, the lies has formed this crust around your spirit being from just bursting forth in radiant glory like Captain Marvel. That's such a beautiful picture to me of what, what we're coming into right now, coming into who we are mm. as sons of God, as daughters of God, the revelation of the sons of God happening now, and we get to be a part of it. We get to lean into that. We get to participate with that if we want to. If we want to, what will it take? 
mm, some intention and attention, diligence, perseverance, asking, keep on seeking and knocking. No. So what what do you think awakening looks like? for you personally and then also for for other people is this going to be similar to some of the past revivals in history or do you think it's going to be different well it it, it would do us some good to look at past revivals in history i think um and to note um what we might expect you know i think healing ministries i think I think to the, such a degree, this has been prophesied even, like a believer being in an earthquake situation and buildings falling down. And, he, and, he, and, and some believer just saying, no, go back in Jesus' name. And walls just like, you know, and time reversing. My friend has experienced this. He was in a situation here at a bar where he, he came to the defense of some woman who was being mercilessly picked on by these, these guys surrounding her. And, he, and they they were like turning on him and about to beat him up and fists in the air. And all of a sudden time froze. And then just, whew, you know, people like reversed and went back and leaned against the wall. And, and like time reversed, time froze and reversed. He experienced that, you know? And it's like, what isn't possible, you know, at the end of the day? Mm. When, when we start to come into right relationship with the God in whom we live and move and have our being and recognizing, oh, it's me. Oh, Christ in me, the hope of glory. I am in you and you are in me and we are one. Our oneness with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we can say along with Jesus, I and the Father are one. Wow. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah, he says that a couple times. Mm. In John 14 and John 12 as well at the end. Just made note of that. Because I've been reading the Gospel of John because I took Jesus up on his little advice. Hey, if you want to get to know me, read the Gospel of John. I'm like, I'm going to read it seven times. Oh, he, the perfect number. Because he gave me that, that metaphor of Naaman dipping seven times in the Jordan. I was like, all right. You know, and the whole purpose of the Gospel of John is so we might believe you can start to trust him. You see, trust is such a beautiful word, isn't it? Do you trust the man who hung on a cross for you? I trust him. Mm. I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. And if I don't trust him, I trust him. <laughs> I choose to trust him. I'm like, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Right? Mm. Until, until this faith grows and develops. Now, one way to develop our faith is through... Um, what you'd call, uh, well, what would you call it? Well, I know speaking in tongues is a form of it, but uh, contemplative prayer. How about that? Mm, yeah, yeah. Contemplative prayer. And this is where we take our intention and attention and quiet down, quiet down. You don't need to be entertained 24 seven. You don't need to have, be on your phones or watch movies and blah, blah, blah. spend some time alone with God in the dark with a candle and some incense or something. You know, and really, I I treasure those times that I've done that. I've had marvelous experiences, you know, with the Lord. Well, I, oh my gosh, I was like laying on my couch one day, just like, just like wanting to connect with God. And, and he says, come up here. I heard him say it. And I'm like, oh, my spirit got excited. My spirit bundled up in my body and became this ball of consciousness in my head. And I was about to just, you know. Whoa. And, and did that happen? I mean, it happened? No, I was, I was too scared at that time. Okay. I, I've, I've since had many other experiences. Uh, <laughs> that was years ago. But but yeah, our, our fear and our doubt holds us back. But just just get, whenever you recognize it, just give it to the Lord. And he doesn't fault us or chide us. He doesn't hold our sins against us. Love doesn't do that. Yeah. Love holds no records of wrongs. Love loves his little boy, Justin. You know, you're his little boy. He loves you. He loves you. You know, we are struggling with a little bit of self-hatred because we have doubted his love. And we take it out on ourselves for doubting his love. We're angry with ourselves for doubting his love. The Lord showed me that mm -hmm. once. He's like, this is, this is what's going on, Daniel. 
This is why you're self-sabotaging. You're angry with yourself for doubting my love. And that's an ego thing. It's like, we just have to be humble and be like, you know what? I did doubt your love. I'm so sorry. How, how can we doubt love, right? A love that dies for us on a cross. Hmm. All right. So. Yeah, man. When you said that, it, it kind of lightened. You know, I think some of that doubt just left. Just a tiny yeah. bit. You know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it all happens incrementally, you know, as we grow, just like Neo did the matrix. It wasn't all at once, was it? No, but you'll come to the day when you're like, you know, right, I'm bullets, are, bullets are yeah. stopping and, and we're flying around, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Imagine yeah. that day. Imagine that. I keep searching the internet. Has any believer caught onto that yet? You know, like, is there any the flying? Is there any, yeah. Is any believers? Cause it's happened in history. I have, I have, I have um, spoken with people whose grandmother had such a relationship with the Lord that her and her whole family had such a relationship with the Lord. This was happening in Russia before the great persecution and it went into communism. They would fly out to their fields. They would fly. And, and saints throughout history have flown and be, had supernatural strength to like lift this ginormous cross and like lift it up and and then like just get so giddy with the joy of the lord they just you know and just like jump and leap and fly for a half a mile down the road you know huh. and saints saints have teleported like oh one of my favorites is maria de agrita who for the over the course of a decade would would fly in this happened in 1620 fly in from the sky as she meditated over in france she's meditating and, and just you know and then spirit traveling, teleportation, whatever you want to call it. She's flying in to preach the gospel, speaking in tongues, by the way, fluently to this, this tribe in New Mexico and, you know, Texas, you know, and over the course of a decade and, and one, you know, so many to the Lord through that, you huh. know, and then eventually was able to lead missionaries to to that well, missionaries ended up visiting these these tribes and they came out with a, a huge cross decorated in flowers to to greet the missionary they're like yeah the 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 lady who comes and visits us told us this would be a good thing to do <laughs> you know and would you baptize us please you know <laughs> you know you know and and, and uh, it's just amazing so we can be huh. part of that we can you know i've met, i've spirit traveled and you know, approached this young man who was demon possessed and just approached him with such confidence. And the, like the low guttural demon voice was speaking to me and I'm just like approaching him boldly and just casting a demon out, you know, somebody, you know, these other experiences. And it's like, they're, they're precious. They're fun. That's the adventurous part of being a, a mystical Christian. And by the way, you know who's more mystical than all of us is Jesus. He is the very mystery of God, Colossians uh, says. Colossians chapter 2 mm. talks about Christ being the mystery, the mysterion, from which we get the word mystic and mysticism from. You know, so it's entirely Christian to be a mystic. Well, not everyone agrees with you, but... You know, and they're just ill-informed. That's okay. People can be ignorant. <laughs> and I'm ignorant about a great many things myself. And that's why we all must remain humble and teachable and re respecting of one another too. Yes. Yeah. Humility. And I think if, if we just had more honest dialogue, I think that's what's missing. Just, just discussion. Yeah, we can get to the bottom of chakras and, and whatnot. <laughs> you know, we're made in the image of God. And it talks about the seven spirits of God. There you go. That's right. Boom. Yeah, some right? people say that. You know, it do talks you, about the... You, yeah, go ahead. You think it actually corresponds with, with the yeah, seven chakras? Absolutely. The emerald throne, you know, talks about the emerald. Uh, and that being the heart chakra. That's where Papa is, in the yes. heart. Yep. You know, the Christ is in the mind, right? Um, oh. anyway, he was doing some chakra healing work as I was doing some Wim Hof breathing, uh, 
that was interesting. I was actually do it going for like a five minute, you know, just doing Wim Hof breathing for five minutes and just focusing it on the Lord within, you know, with intention. And, uh, I started praying in tongues and, and all of a sudden I'm starting to do, he's starting to do chakra cleansing work with me. Right. And we're working up the chakras and we lingered for a while at, at like the will center. And I'm like, when can we go to the heart? He's like, okay, just a minute. Not quite yet. And as soon as we went into the heart, it made this loop with the red, with the red chakra. It was like, it was like doing this looping thing, you know? Huh? I was like, whoa, wow, 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 wow. That was interesting. So what does um, that mean? For me, it means he wants us to know he's bringing healing to, <laughs> to all that ails us. He's curing our fear. Um, for me, that's what it meant to me, like looping with the red chakra. Red chakra is more like survival, you know, it's like, like a lot of base, like, am I going to be okay? You know, this insecurity that we, we deal with. Uh, and he's like, I've got you. I've got you. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, more than that, I mean, we can just ask the Lord about what that what that might mean. And maybe he'll, he'll share something with you. You know, it's like the Lord wants to speak with us. And he says, my sheep hear my voice. Right. Well, it should be natural and normal for every one of us to be greeted every morning with, with Jesus, you know, and some marvelous revelation, you know, uh, that he'd have to share with us. You know, he does that often for me and uh, my best mornings are that, you know, and I, I don't always walk perfectly. Sometimes I consider myself quite a black sheep. You know, I have a proclivity to horror. I, I can't, get my nose out of TikTok, watching about how the, <laughs> the enemy is trying to kill us, you know, and you know, the conspiracy things that, that you know, uh, that sure there's p people conspiring against us and trying to use our own wills against us to manifest a darker reality. Are we going to do that? No, we're going to awaken the Christ consciousness, you know, and manifest the kingdom of heaven and say, not my will, but yours be done. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, Papa. I like calling him Papa. Isn't that nice? And then submitting ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, because this is spiritual warfare. We're not actually against any person. They're captives. They're, they're slaves, you know, and, and just captives to what they're up to and deceived and whatnot. But our real wrestling matches with principalities and powers and spiritual realms and so scripture is, says submit yourself to the lord jesus christ resist the devil and he will flee from you the devil himself will flee from you i once used that you know in a i, I woke up um in an astral plane one morning in a wrestling match with a samurai warrior of a demon and he had my my arms twisted like this and kind of making me kneel before him and then the first thing out of my mouth was, I submit myself to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and resist the devil and he must flee. You know, and then it was just a matter of, okay, skedaddle, you know. But honestly, my heart has, has turned to, to such a degree now. If you catch the Father's heart, you're like wanting to see these demons redeemed. Like receive, uh, you were created to be a beautiful being. The blood of Jesus, you know, I'm just going to apply the blood of Jesus to you or whatever, you know, like, like if somebody needs to believe for them, <laughs> you know, that's like, you. Yeah. I guess that's me. I, I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the that's weird good. one. And it might not even be theologically correct, but <laughs> I'm, like, I'm catching father's heart where he's, yeah, he's not willing that any yeah. should perish, hmm. <laughs> but that all oh. should come to metanoia. To realize, to remember who they are, and I've I've encountered enough stories that have given me hope in this direction. I've interviewed some of them who've, who've met demons, and the demons turned around and wow. came and were transformed to their former glory, like returned like, to, to Jesus. That instant? Yeah, well, he he watched the transformation happen before his eyes. So. Wow, it's powerful yeah. stuff. I have uh, I have one last question. 
uh, for people who perhaps just they just don't trust God, maybe they feel jaded, like God let them down, life let them down, somehow something didn't work. What would you say to people who are kind of in that place where they don't really trust God, maybe bitter, don't want to do anything with the church, Jesus, whatnot? Well, it reminds me, first of a Philip Yancey book, uh, Disappointment with God. I was once on a Philip Yancey kick. I ended up reading like every book by him that I could find just because he was such a, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in a, I want to say an aspiring author. I'm really struggling though with, uh, with that. <laughs> but his writing was, was very helpful in that regard. Disappointment with God. Do, do we feel that? Now, I'm going to tell you the answer is get to know Jesus. You know, uh, develop intimacy with him. And by that, I mean, let him see into you. Into me, you see intimacy. You know, and when you let him see into you, he heals you. And you can you then see into him. See, that's, that's kind of how that works. Shared, shared intimacy. But, and that, and... Goodness, it comes down to trusting Jesus Christ, the man who died on the cross, right? Do you trust? Can you trust? Can you trust a man who died, who would die on a cross for you? You know, um, for me, that's what it what it came to. And then I came to, huh, I came to this overwhelming and, and and just beautiful recognition that he's the good shepherd, my good shepherd, who's laid on his life for me, right? Like my, my good shepherd and overseer of my soul, and he's good at his job and he's on the job. And so then that is a tremendous peace that I carry with me. It's like, yes. All right. I'm in his care. Um, so uh, to answer your question more fully, I've been there. Uh, I've been wounded by the church, by my expectations of how they should have been a welcoming, warm family to me instead of treating me like I'm some sort of you know, enemy, heretic, that's leading everyone astray. Because I'm that's not my heart. My heart is actually my heart is actually toward those who might identify as new age. I'm like, hey, do you know uh, the fullness uh, of our inheritance as believers? There's a lot in the new age movement. There's a lot of things we can learn about how to be a, a, a who we are as sons of God from, from what some of the things that the new age movement has picked up on manifesting, right. Right. All these, all these things, but, or whatever else, there's a lot there, but my, I don't want to lose my train of thought. I feel like I'm going to, <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my train of thought. Where was I? Um, oh, I've been wounded. Right. Um, but, then I look back and I, I see the point. I see the point that I have let people down. People were hoping for a better friendship with Daniel and, and they didn't get it. And I let them down. We're all perpetrators and we're all the perpetrated mm. upon. We're wounding ourself. Those are other versions of you mm. that have hurt you. And you've been a version of you that have hurt you when you hurt them, you know, cause we play this us and them game, but, but just recognizing our oneness, how can we heal from this? Confess our sins one to another and so be healed. You know, we do that. So there was a time where, uh, I pulled back from the church cause I was, I was bitter, but I was recognizing, oh my gosh, the scripture talks about a root of bitterness defiling many. And I certainly don't want to do that. I want to be an asset to the kingdom of God, not a detriment. You know, and so letting go of our bitterness. And then when we do that, when we forgive any in the church who have wounded us, there might have been a pastor that comes to mind for any of you or whoever, you know, your own parents for that matter might have been those, you know, damaging influences that we need when we forgive we recognize oh they're just like me and we start to have compassion on ourselves start to forgive ourselves that's why i believe that the 
unpardonable sin is unforgiveness. Just in general. Just unforgiveness. Yeah, just in general. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when we when we fully process our forgiveness, that's where the healing and redemption reconciliation will happen for all. Ultimate reconciliation. Can we forgive the devil? Can we forgive the Good devil question. for murdering my grandma with cancer? You know, or whatever the case may be, whatever kind of scenario, you know, we we uh, we've we've faced. You know, the the Lord actually asked a friend of mine, and he he was so intrigued by uh, you know what we're going to be discussing today that he he wanted to be in on it. He's like, "Oh, can I join?" <laughs> and the Lord coached him through forgiving Satan. Jesus actually asked really? my friend to forgive Satan. Okay, and and, oh. and Lucifer. Now he he tends to he tends to think that maybe Satan and Lucifer are two different beings, and I yeah I don't necessarily disagree with him. There's a lot of a lot of things that we don't understand that we pretend we think we know about who the enemy is, you know, and uh, and what's really going on. Because just as just as I can be connected to the host of heaven, you can be at times connected to the host of hell and live in and be in deception and even thinking that you're connecting to the host of heaven when you're actually connecting to the host of hell, you know, it, it, this, this, this needs careful guidance by the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why the scriptures say set apart Christ as Lord, keep him in that role as good shepherd and overseer of your soul. Because you're you're a sheep that can run away and jump over a fence thinking, oh, that'll be fun to go wander off and you find yourself in a mess and hmm. you know, drift away. Yeah. I was gonna ask you before, but I mean, I guess this will be the last question. <laughs> but, That's fine. Or just a comment, more more like I guess I was gonna ask you, you know, when we do these spirit travels, things like that. It sounds dangerous and like how do we prepare? But I guess, you know, you just answered that, you know, submitting ourselves to Christ. Yeah. So. Right on. Right on. Yeah. And recognizing that he's not a killjoy. In fact, he's the greatest joy. And he, he likes to bring these adventures our way. He wants you to have fun. Fun is the serious business of heaven. <laughs> and it's fun to go on redemption journeys, to go spirit travel and, you know, cast demons out and heal somebody one of my favorite stories uh from john g lake which by the way if if you want a free book to read about this story you can visit my blog daniellovett.com and search in there for john g lake and adventures with god and there's a free book download uh, which this story comes from but he he was ministering in a church in south africa years ago and somebody there says, I have a sister who's been put away in an insane asylum in England. Can we pray for her? And he's like, all right. And he went into prayer. <laughs> and then he went into the spirit and shot straight out of his body and flew over the whole continent of Africa and right to England and down into that very insane asylum, into the very room she was in saw her face to face. So he was being the ministering angel here. And this is what I'm saying you can do and I can do. We can do this. Hmm. And he just put his hands on her head and just blessed her, prayed for her. And he saw the, the light come back to her eyes. And he knew the prayer was answered. See, that's, that's partnering with heaven, not with fear. We don't pray out of fear. We pray in faith. And he saw that. Anyway, and then uh, lo and behold, uh, the report comes back that sure enough, she was released, you know, with within weeks um, from that asylum and it was a happy, good testimony. So, wow. yeah, that sounds fun. That's crazy. It? Yeah, that's, there's, the, that's the adventure. <laughs> hey, adventure sounds cool. So. Well, Daniel, um, really appreciate you coming on. This was a very fun, interesting conversation. Definitely a lot of food for thought. 
if yeah. um, if people want to to contact you, is there a good way for them yeah. to do that? Well, I do have a Facebook page, which I I, I kind of went AWOL on social media for a while there. I don't know who noticed or what, but <laughs> I, I have a face facebook.com slash the mystical Christian is my Christian mystic page. Um, and uh, so I'll be posting to that. And actually, <laughs> I'm trying to renew my my commitment to to be in people's lives and to be that, to you know, to not just go a wall again. I don't want to do that. I think I, I did that just because I was I was searching out some matters I thought might have been too heavy for people and also dabbling in some channeling that kind of got a little crazy and I <laughs> interesting. Man, we, we didn't even get to that, huh? Shoot. Maybe another time. So I had to make a lot of those videos private <laughs> on my YouTube channel. <laughs> and uh just kind of like, well, I don't know if I'm being the most helpful for everyone right now. You know, the Proverbs talk about sticking to the safe path and, uh, you know, channeling <laughs> beings from the outer, you know, the universe, like, like the predator, you know, um, basically like a Klingon from <laughs> another galaxy was not the best thing to do, perhaps, but that's. <laughs> It was fun. Yeah. Well, I would definitely want to hear about that, but uh, maybe another time. <laughs> yeah. If, I mean, if people are ready for that. I was, I was letting myself go there a little bit and I'm like, uh, oh, rein it back in Daniel. Uh, you know, so I want to be most helpful. So I'm even thinking of like, Hey, let's do some Bible studies. The, the two books the Lord has, has me on is, uh, the gospel of John and the book of Proverbs. Uh, the host of heaven said, uh, about the book of Proverbs, I said, this is a class you must pass. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to stick in that book. And, and it's, and it's all about, uh, it's all about, uh, you know what? They gave me like a key for it. I had this amazing encounter with a host of heaven being who, who was very alien. <laughs> and, uh, and he, and he grabbed me by the the face, you know, and I, and I, I, I kind of just wanted to turn away and he's like, no, here, you face me and I'm, I'm just going to just transmit this to you. And he was transmitting to me the, the, the key of the book of Proverbs. And it's this. And this is what he told me. Uh, he says, I have made vows to my beloved. And in saying that, he's talking about the son making vows to his beloved, the father and honoring the instructions of the father and the wisdom the wisdom saying father you know best and submitting himself this is what the son did submitting himself to the father into his instructions to to letting father say this is what love is son this is what love is and so it's making making those vows of like a Jedi. That's, that's really cool. Huh? That's the kind of a, a vision that I'm chasing uh, lately of being a Jedi. That's what it means to be a disciple of Christ and follow the father as Christ did, you know, and, and there's a code of the Jedi mm. and it's being a prisoner of honor. I mean, a code of honor and love. And my goodness, my goodness. See, so we receive forgiveness for all the ways we didn't act that way and we aim ourselves in that direction okay that's that's yeah. my that's my advice to myself and to all of us that's beautiful advice daniel thank yes. you so much justin it's been a pleasure um happy to make a new friend in you and namaste. I do this by the way at the end of my shows. You remember? Have you ever seen one of those? I think <laughs> I have. Namaste. namaste. And to me, this is the Christ in me honors the Christ in you, and we submit yes. to one another in love. Because I have yeah. much to learn from you, Justin. And wow. yeah, um, and I'm gonna humbly admit that you have a lot to learn from me, too. Sure. Yeah. And um, probably equally, you know, is if we became fast friends, 
we can uh, we can do more of that. So, Sounds wonderful. Like that. Thank you. All right, guys. Good. Thank you for tuning in and namaste. Yes.